In this video, I'll show you how you can use a shared action to create a mute button for a responsive design project. Okay, I saw this uh, post on the Adobe support community for Adobe Captivate. And uh, this user, uh, I think his name was Kenny, was looking for a custom sound button or mute button, if you will, but wanted it to be available on multiple slides. Now, of course, it was a responsive design, fluid box design. So you couldn't just simply place that button on slide number one and display for the rest of the project. You have to place it within those fluid boxes. So I think I've got a solution that will help Kenny out and I'm going to share that with you today. Okay, so as you can see, I've created a master slide where I've got, you know, a text caption for the title, an area in the middle for any content that will be added. And my navigation controls are going to go down here. And I plan on having others besides the mute button, uh, which you can see here. Now, this is simply an image used as button. And if we go into state view, you can see that the normal state is that the audio is playing, but the indicator is that if you press this, it will mute the audio. And then it's going to have an unmute state as well which it will switch to. So it's all well and good to use the system command variables to perform actions by assigning new values, but you want the button to change so that it becomes a visual cue for your learners. So when you arrive on this slide, the audio is playing, and of course this button becomes a mute button if you press it. So we need to write uh, a little advanced action for that, and we'll do that right now. So we'll go into the project drop down menu and select advanced actions click on the plus icon and we'll call this volume underscore on underscore off and you can call it whatever you wish but what we need to do here is make this a conditional advanced action so we're going to select the conditional tab checkbox and we're going to first of all check the value of a system variable that uh, that's available to you to use like a command, like an action. So if I type in the word mute, CP command mute is the system variable that I'm looking for. And we're gonna see if it is equal to the literal value of zero, which it should be. Uh, that's its default uh, value. If it's equal to zero, we're going to assign CP command mute with a value, a literal value of one. Um, I'm going to copy this right here and go down to the else statement and paste it in there and simply change the one back to zero so that this truly becomes a toggle. So if it's equal to zero, it will assign it a value of one. If it's not equal to zero, it will assign it a value of zero. But to make it a visual thing as well, we also want to change the appearance of our mute button itself. So if we are uh, assigning CP command mute with a value of one, we also want to change the state of our button called mute to, in this case here, unmute, because that's going to be the option that's available. And again, I can copy this, paste it down here, and we'll change that back to normal when we're returning back to normal. So this is all set up. We can save this as an action, click OK, and we can go ahead and close this advanced action. If we go over to the Actions tab, we can set the on success to execute advanced actions, and we can run the same volume on off script. Now, here's the problem. If I use this same script and the same button on subsequent slides, I'm going to need to make multiple ex uh, advanced actions, one for each uh, slide, because the button is literally going to be a different button on every single slide. 
So that's where shared actions come in. Think of shared actions like a advanced action that's a fill in the blank. So if we go in and we change this now to a shared action and you can open up the advanced action window and we can save as a shared action here. Now here's where we're going to name our parameter descriptions. And in this case here, we're going to uh, just simply put little visual cues like fill in the blank cues. So this is our button that we are changing. And this is the unmute state and the normal state of that button. So if we save that, click OK and click close now, we can change this to execute shared action go into our parameters here and we'll first of all select the button. We'll check the unmute state and then the normal state there and we can press save and everything will work fine. Now here's where things get really kind of cool. If I copy this button here, go down to slide two and paste it in and do the same thing for three and four. It's pasting in the same shared action for each of these slides, for each of these buttons. But notice that it's automatically updating the button name because, of course, when you copy and paste a button, Adobe Captivate will give it a new name to make sure that it has that uniqueness. And, of course, it still runs the same script. So uh, we should be fine to test this out across multiple slides here. Uh, and of course, we can just preview on project here. So if we open this up here and we can mute the slide and unmute the slide and mute the slide. And if we go to the next slide, here's the problem. Here's the only thing that's missing is that it returns to that different state. So what we need is another shared action that's going to be run on slide enter. What we want is a slightly different version of that same advanced action. So in this case here, this is going to be the on enter volume setting, whatever you want to call it again. So we're going to check the value of that system variable. So if the variable CP command mute is equal to the literal value of zero, then we are going to change the state of our mute button. We'll start off with this one to normal, else, and we can even copy this here. Paste that in and change that to unmute. So it's almost the same advanced action, except we're not changing the value of CP command mute. So we can do on enter volume here. We can save as an action. I like to save the original advanced action so I can refer back to it later if necessary. And we can save as a shared action. And we're just going to indicate which is the button. And this is the normal state and the unmute state of that button. Save that as another shared action. And obviously you would need to combine that with any other on enter actions that you're doing. But on the slide itself, we could have execute shared action and we will use the on enter volume and just make sure we're referring to the button for this slide and here's the normal state and the unmute state and save that and do a similar on enter advanced action or shared action rather and we'll just point to which object is available for this slide and the multi-state objects for those and obviously if you have 
um, other buttons that need to be set up accordingly, you would use the same uh, sort of approach here and maybe make a version of the shared action that sets up all of your controls the, a certain way that you have them. Uh, and so this will work quite fine here. And in fact, if you duplicated any of these slides, this uh, shared action and the objects and variables and states that it's referring to will automatically get updated as well. So if I press save, we'll do a preview of this and we should have no problem with everything working the way that it should. Okay, so on slide one, we can mute this and if we go to the next slide it still shows muted i can unmute it move to the third slide mute it again if i wish and it will retain that on enter of all the additional slides there so that would work like a charm for you if you thought this video was helpful please like and share it with your colleagues if you need help with adobe captivate hire paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.